Uh, let's jump into this last topic right quick. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll argue this for just a few minutes because I don't think this one will take uh, forever. But this is from yesterday. This is the topic that you and I were going to discuss uh, to end yesterday's show, and I ended up having to go out and fix my fence. So, okay. um, and by the way, uh, Michael jumped in. He said, Gavin Newsom is terrible. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you know, I don't know. It seems like he's got a pretty good grasp on uh, on, on what this thing has been doing, this COVID stuff. But uh, anyway, the this is the first thing he's done good in in his entire term. Yeah, but but even now, he because he's talking about not bringing back pro sports until twenty twenty one. Yeah. But then you're gonna have NFL teams leaving the the state. You're gonna have major league baseball teams leaving the state to go play, he, like all that. So he's trying to. He's I get, trying I get to make it make it safer than it needs to be. He's trying to make it more extreme than it needs to be. Yeah. And somehow he thinks that'll make him look good. But he's he's done a good job with this stuff. He hasn't been bad. But up until then, I follow a lot of guys that live in LA and don't Yeah. I know. Pretty wor- pretty worthless. Yeah. I'm with you. Go ahead. All right. So the question is the first team to win the college football national title and it is out of a group. Okay. This is out of this group. A non-Ohio State Big Ten team, okay. a non-Clemson ACC team, or a Pac-12 team. Now, the the numbers will tell you that other than USC winning it in 2004, no team west of the Mississippi River has won a national championship in, what, 20 years? It's I mean, been I, it, a while. It may have been longer been than long, that. I can't remember what the exact stat. a long stat. time. So, uh, oh, because, Texas. Okay, Texas. Okay, so so USC and Texas were the only two. I think I think those are the only two. And then other than SEC teams, you've got Clemson, Florida State, Florida State. Yep, that's it. Yeah, I mean it's been the SEC for a long time. Well, yeah, we went through a run of the BCS where it was. I mean, that, and then and then Ohio State. So Clemson, Florida State, yeah. Ohio State, Texas, USC. And then your Alabama, Auburn, I don't LSU, know how Florida. Far back we're going. When was the last Miami championship? That was in the two thousand one. Oh no, they lost to Ohio State that year. To, uh, the oh Willis yeah, McGahee year. That was that was way over twenty years, right? How no, old no, two thousand one was Miami. Two thousand two is the Miami team that lost to Ohio State. Oh, then okay. Well, yeah. that's twenty years in. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Either way, uh, so non Ohio State Big Ten, non Clemson ACC, or a Pac twelve team. Who is the first to win a college football national title going forward? So I tried to make a list of teams that realistically have a chance in that group. All I right? did the same thing. And, and, here's, and here's my list. I've got Oregon, <laughs> USC, but I think Clay Helton would have to lose his job. Yeah. I think Wisconsin can win a championship. I think Penn State can win a championship. I think, I know I'm going to get shit on for this. I think Michigan can win a championship, even though yesterday I said that Notre Dame ceiling was it. Um, I think Florida State, now a lot of that is love for Mike Norvell. Uh, with the way these teams that, are constructed. Hey, by the way, now if, those are the exact same teams that I had written down here. Now, let me tell you something. If Urban Meyer takes over Arizona State tomorrow, they they now have a shot at this, okay? Like, we know We're, that we have to go with what we got. Yeah, we we can't we can't say you know, it just just base it on the coaches that you got right now. That it, with, you with know what you, you can got tell right what they're now, doing. I put USC in there in name only. I do not believe Clay Helton can win a national title. No. But I also don't think Clay Helton is a bad coach. Either. But we also understand what the situation is at USC, and that is that Clay Helton will eventually uh, lose his job. Lose his so, job. Yes. Yeah, and so that that's my guess. Um, um, if I had to pick one gun to my head right now, one of these teams, I got it. Ooh, ooh. The closest, the closest, I think, is Penn State. I trust that coach the most. Really? And I think that program, they're pretty damn talented year in and year out. Yeah, they are. It, now, it, here, my answer is Oregon. Uh, by the I, way, so that would be my Matt, second choice. That's Matt and Michael choice. both said uh, that's a great question. Uh, I have to ride with the Pac-12, and Matt said the Pac-12. Um, now it, we were talking about specific teams, specific teams, um, not a conference, not anything. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to narrow down specific teams. If you give me the field, I'll take Pac-12. Hey, I get, I get twelve teams. Yeah, but you also get USC and 
Oregon. I get, yeah, I get both them. And if Chip Kelly just happens to turn things around to UCLA, I don't we don't happening. know that in two years UCLA doesn't look like Oregon, and it just took Chip a little while to figure it out. Yeah, but it, Oregon was immensely talented uh, when well, Chip Kelly again, took over because of Michael Lottie. In two yeah. years, UCLA won't be able to do that. It's not like talent's not in California. No, that's that's true. But it, with as bad as the recruiting has been the last two seasons, it's going to take longer than that for them to get okay. to a national point. Oregon is is relatively close. They were number 12 in recruiting in the country this past year, number 7 the year before that, uh, number 13 the year before that, and... I, it was still top 20, I think number 19 or 18, whatever it was. Uh, Matt jumped in and said, Washington, no, no not now. Uh, I don't know, but even I don't still, know they, who their coach is. If you told me they were Chris Peterson there, they'd be in this conversation, absolutely. Well, even still, they still don't recruit at a high level. Matt jumped in and I said, Chris Peterson. Uh, you know, but you know me in college, though. I'm a, you know why I picked Penn State over Oregon? Because I trust the coach. Yeah, no, I, I can understand that. Would you uh, trust Trent Franklin over Cristobal? I would trust Cristobal over Franklin. That's crazy. That's in the end game coaching. That's just the the resume. I don't think it's crazy at all. Cristobal at all. Well, no, not yet. But you can build a team. But we got a resume of him blowing games. In Franklin's of him, of him making mistakes. Yeah. Okay. Him I, making mistakes. I understand where you're coming from. But and Franklin being unprepared. Franklin did the same thing. He's done the same stuff against. Think about the the biggest game that you can remember for Penn State. That was against Ohio State. The the year after they won the Big Ten, when they got left out of the playoff, they what was it fourth and four or fourth and five or whatever, um, and they they run a draw play. I mean, it was against like yeah. on the side of Chase Young, so like it, terrible decisions all yeah. around. But I, I'm with you. Here's uh, Matt said ACC teams always screw up somehow during the season. There's not another other than Florida State. Oh no, like I'm and Miami has got Nor- talent. Too. I trust Norvell to go down there and 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 and, and figure some that things show. out. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I need Mike Norvell to make you know, them look like the University of Memphis with Florida players instead of the University of Memphis players. Then they absolutely can win a national championship. Other than yeah. that, I'd love for Virginia Tech to be on this. I've been yeah, so hard, yeah, but, but I'm just wrong. I'm and just that, wrong. Well, no, they're, they're just they're not they're not going to be talented enough to be able to win a national championship. Quint, because Quinte it, just ain't he he just don't have it. No, he just for not whatever that reason level. Yeah, for whatever reason that that's what happened. Uh, Matt said uh, the Pac-12. Uh, could, no, he said uh, two up and down in the Big Ten. Pac-12 could just have a team that plays a great schedule while an SEC team is too bit up. Uh, yeah. Michael said Oregon probably the closest. I'd like to see Utah, maybe ASU. And then Matt said Washington has built up immunity to COVID-19, so that they will then infect everyone as they play. <laughs> I'm so glad we have these chats, man. <laughs> I swear. I do um, think that Oregon's probably the closest. I, I, I just, think if if I had a playoff game between teams being even, yeah, Franklin and Cristobal, I would take Franklin. I I can understand that. I think I just that would. I think Cristobal understands the the line of scrimmage better than Franklin does. At I don't he may not always have a better line, but man, I mean their offensive line this past year was a wrecking ball, and their defensive line has gotten ridiculous. Man, their front seven yeah, on the it's defense because is he's a insane. Meathead. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's what you have to have for to win. Coach. I love that guy on my coaching staff. I don't want a meathead for a head coach. I just don't. You got you got Ed Orgeron at LSU. What are you talking about? He's like the Ed king Orgeron. of the meatheads. Ed, Ed Orgeron is absolutely not a meathead. He's not a genius, but he's just a – there's a difference between country strong and crazy. He Ed Orgeron does not look like a meathead. You know what I mean by meathead. I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know. You're talking about a dude I with know. a 24-inch waist and a 52-inch chest. Yeah. Arms so big that he can't hold his dangling when he pees. That's a- <laughs> all right, that's crystal ball. That's a meathead. That's a guy that looks in the gym and just stares at himself all day long. I I think Oregon is playing SEC type football right now, and I think that because they play the same style of football as Clemson, LSU, Alabama, etc., uh, if they can persuade enough kids that are out there on the West Coast to come there to be the preeminent program. I think that Oregon can win because I, I think that the schedule sets up easier for them than it does for a Penn State. Oh, yeah. So that, that's where oh, I'm coming yeah. from. Penn with State it, so. is always going to have a much difficult schedule. Uh, Far more difficult schedule. Uh, Matt said Nike has to get them some more flashy uniforms and uh, and get some kids coming up for the bling bling. And he also said, yah, 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 football. And Michael jumped in. He, he asked this question. Any non-power conference teams, SMU, Memphis, um, 
No. There's not a group of five team that will be able to win a national championship with the way that things are currently constructed. Yeah. It just won't happen. I'd love to see it. I think it'd make this sport insanely more interesting. If, but it's if not going to happen. We, we would need a lot to change, but if there is a program capable of doing it, it will be UCF. Yeah, because right Because they have the biggest school alumni, like, in the country. Well, not alumni, but uh, 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 enrollment. They're the, they're the largest school in the country. They have a gazillion dollars. Okay? Yeah, it's it's. They a don't lot. have old money like Harvard and Stanford and in those places. They got new money. Yeah, they their endowment new, is still pretty big. Yeah, they got new tech money, which is stupid. And they kind of like that they're the little guy. I'm going to tell you, if somebody could build a Power Five team of athletes that could compete with the big boys, it's them. Yeah. Now, it, they're, they're recruiting. Yeah, they they're recruiting right is not now, there yet. But, but it's not I, – I can't tell you in five, six years they won't. Yeah. Now, it, it, it all depends. I mean, we still don't really know about Josh Heupel. I mean, we got to oh, see no, what he no. does. Once but, again, in five, six years, a lot could change. A lot, yeah, a lot can change. But, but they're the only program strictly because of their money and location. That's it. Matt said UCF also has the bikini girls. That, that's true. Yeah. That's no, true. I'm just telling you, money, being in, you have to be in, if you're going to be a small school to win, you have to be in Florida or, or Texas, I fully believe, or you can't do it because yeah. you've got to be able to find three-star kids that really are five-star kids. They just couldn't read and or nobody could find them because well, they were in the middle of nowhere. It's playing. what Baylor did. It's what Matt Rule did at Baylor. Yeah, it was and, just and, unbelievable yeah. at. I mean, he, he found talent that wasn't being recruited by everybody else and was able to get them in school. Like that's, and those guys were uh, were unbelievable. It's, it's they, what they it's just, what Mike Norvell did it wrong. Yeah, it's what Mike Norvell did at uh, at Memphis. He, in Memphis. he got yeah. he got the three stars <laughs> that couldn't get into school at some of these other places, the the Mississippi Delta kids, and right. and got them into Memphis, and right. it worked out brilliantly. I mean, it, my gosh, I mean these some yeah. of these kids were unreal, and he and has when, turned and them when into you're in, NFL when you're in stars. the state when you're in a state like Florida, you don't have to leave the state. I yeah. mean, you can put together a power five, an SEC type school out of just kids in Florida. And hell, I mean, you could probably realistically comb the JUCOs of Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and, and Mississippi and, and Louisiana and, and, and load up a team. It just takes, at some point in time, you've got to put all those pieces together at the same time. Before we get out of here, I got to correct Michael on something. He said, I'd take the California girls over UCF bikini girls any day. It ain't the same, brother. It, it, yeah, I've been out there. man. I've been out. I've been out west, and it's nice, but it, it ain't the same as Southern girls. It just ain't. No, and we can no. have that discussion some other time if we want to get really, into that. It's really not. But uh, but it, it ain't the same. It ain't the same. You need to come down here, see what you see what we're working with, and then and then go back up. <laughs> but you got to be careful. See, this Cali girls, I'm gonna bet are, are, are soft emotionally. Oh, Lord, I don't yeah, know I'll, this. I'm criticizing people. You come you come to the South and you talk crazy. crazy to a girl, she will beat your ass. A hundred percent. hundred percent. So that's it's what toughened us up. Michael said I hadn't been south past Texas. He said, I'll come down. That's I've already invited him down to Memphis. Said, Bring it on, brother. We would love to have you. All right. Uh we've gone fifty six minutes deep in this. This was a fun conversation today. I, I feel like we're getting better every day. That's my plan. That's my plan. We get the reps in. We keep these conversations going. I love talking about this kind of stuff. We uh, Hopefully, we'll have Felica on sometime next week, kind of prepping for the draft a little bit. I talked to him last night. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll invite some more guests on and whatnot, and we'll, you know, we'll figure this thing out. But we will keep having conversations that are interesting, at least to us. But if you have any ideas, you want to email them to us, uh, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, Chris at winningcureseverything.com, or just hit us up on Twitter. Uh, he's at Chris B. Giannini. I'm at Gary WCE. Or you can obviously text the show's account. That's at Winning Cures. We would appreciate that. Make sure that you leave some nice comments, nice reviews. Subscribe to the show. We're on Twitch. We're on Periscope. We're on YouTube. We're on where I, just go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything up there. Everything that you could possibly need. Chris, anything else we need to hit, brother? Yeah, Brian. That is it. All right. We hope you guys have a good afternoon. We will see you all again the same time tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.